All right, we're back. We're at uh, the after party at Joe's house, and I scored a coup for an interview. I've got Martin Holiday with me. Martin is the editor, pardon me, the senior editor for Green Building Advisor, and also an editor for Fine Home Building Magazine, of which are fantastic resources. I've been a subscriber for almost 20 years now to Fine Home Building, and I owe a ton to you, Martin, for your leadership in our industry and for your education. Let me ask you a couple questions that are on my mind on uh, on the building science front. You know, Martin. Uh, uh, we've got a lot of gray hairs of building science camp uh, in some of the younger generation, but that next generation that's just getting out of school now that's going to be the future architect leaders and builders across America, how do we educate them in, in the tenets of building science? Well, I don't know um, specifically whether it's in a way it's everybody's job but basically I focus on what I do which is to write and to provide a forum for questions on green building topics so uh, obviously indirectly in addition to entertaining and educating we hope that young people will come to our website and will gain education from just visiting and learning I think well one thing that's uh, encouraging to me here at this conference is there are more young people every year yeah. there's the new generation of people who are in architecture school now and a lot of builders who are starting out have an interest in environmental topics because of global warming because of concern about our environment so I think we're seeing a kind of uh, a second flowering of interest in environmental issues comparable to what happened in the early 70s there was kind of a lull in the 80s and 90s and now there's revival of interest so i have a lot of uh positive optimism about uh the next generation of architects and builders i think things are looking good in that front that's great i love it hey martin tell me about what concerns you today in the industry as you travel around the nation and write what are the things that concern you well, we're still getting a lot of questions at Green Building Advisor from people who are dealing with builders and architects who don't have a good foundation in building science knowledge, houses of system detailing, uh, moisture intrusion issues, how insulation and air leakage can get you into trouble. We get uh, questions from people building very large expensive houses who say who describe situations which I find appalling leaky ductwork in the attic um, oversized HVAC systems no attention to air leakage halfway through the project they realize something's going wrong and then they say what do I do now uh, we get reports from people all over the country who visit job sites and see uh, every trade drilling holes through the walls and not paying attention to air leakage so some of the basic stuff that we've been talking about for 30 years getting a good building envelope that's airtight doing a blower door test keeping your HVAC system entirely within the condition envelope everyone should know that by now it's not fully reflected in the code it's not being enforced by code inspectors and um, competition among builders looking for a low price and to attract homeowners willing to buy a shiny new kitchen is resulting in some sloppily built houses. There are exceptions, of course, and those are the ones who tend to read Green Building Advisor, but we're really not seeing a high quality of construction in the U.S. yet in many areas. Well, I totally echo that sentiment in my marketplace, and frankly, I spend a lot of time on my blog talking about just water in general right. and how do we keep uh, how do I keep our houses dry because I see so many houses being built where there's just not that attention to that detail. And everything, if, if you have a great HVAC system and a super efficient house, it doesn't matter if you get a leaks right so um, I mean things are getting better more and more people are asking these questions I would say on average building quality in the United States has been increasing over the last 10 years so we're getting there but we haven't gotten there yet <laughs> yeah, I agree let's keep pushing my friend let's keep pushing hey let me uh, let me switch gears and ask you a tech question uh, just as a thank you I want to say thank you to you for your work you do as a specific example a couple years ago you posted a uh, an article on fine home building called the backyard tape test and uh, and this was when I was really trying to figure out how to ratchet down my air tightness on my houses and how to get below that three ACH 50 threshold and uh, and from the results on that test I got some great products and really have been able to get much lower blower door scores and we're really as a company trying to get uh, to one ACH 50 on all our projects um, so thank you for that tell me about exterior rigid foam and your experiences I got a lot of questions on my blog what kind of exterior rigid foam should I use EPS XPS, PolyISO, even the new one uh, to the marketplace or seemingly new one, Roxel. What's your thoughts on those different products? 
Well, of course, Roxel is a mineral wool. It's a fiber-based insulation, so it's really not a rigid foam. There are really three types of rigid foam available in the United States commonly, which is EPS, XPS, and polyiso. Most green builders avoid XPS, extruded polystyrene, which is either the pink stuff or the blue stuff, mm -hmm. because its blowing agent has a very high global warming potential. And some of the blowing agent inevitably escapes into the atmosphere, either in the manufacturing process or over the life of the foam as it degrades over time or as the little bubbles evaporate, basically. And um, so the energy saved by that foam, which might reduce global warming, is overpowered by the destructive effects of the blowing agents, which were actually worsening our climate situation. So if you have a choice, avoid XPS. Fortunately, dense EPS, expanded polystyrene, which is the white stuff, um, can be used below grade, can be used under slabs, can be used for really all purposes that XPS is used for if you get the dense stuff. Type 2 or Type 9 are the two designations you usually see. And you can research this on Green Building Advisor for more details. You don't want the cheap stuff that crumbles that you see at Home Depot where if you just touch it, you can see the little fibers that disintegrate. You want the denser stuff. And uh, so EPS right now in the U.S. is the go-to um, type of foam for green builders. Polyiso actually works well in your region of the country in Texas, polyiso poly has uh, no uh, chemical issues or environmental issues. Its main problem is that it doesn't perform well at low temperatures. In, in Where I live in Vermont and anywhere in New England, on the coldest day of the year, the performance of polyiso tends to be particularly bad. So now that we realize that, there have been more and more testing on that issue over the years. Those of us in cold climates are not using polyiso as our exterior layer of foam. If you want a foam sandwich with EPS on the outside and polyiso inboard from that, that can work because the polyiso won't get as cold. Or if you're in Texas or Florida, the polyiso performs well. So. Yeah, let me ask you a piggyback question on that since we're on the topic. What do you what do you prefer to see on a job site or what's your favorite detail? Um, the house wrap or the weather barrier first or the uh, foam first and then the weather barrier? I don't think it makes any difference. I think it really depends on whether you have any windows or Audi windows. Um, if you have an Audi window, it's easier to integrate the uh, water resistive barrier if it's outside of the foam. It's usually plastic house wrap. There's a lot of different ways to do it. If it's in any window where you know, you've got exterior insulation but the window is tight to the sheathing, then trying to figure out how to integrate that with your WRB system is hard unless you put the WRB against the sheathing behind the foam. Hey, let me ask you one more follow up on that while we're on the weather barrier topic. Um, what do you think about fluid applied versus the peon sticks out there? Well, I've just recently did a blog this week on fluid applied flashings and uh, a couple of years ago I wrote on fluid applied WRBs. All reports I've heard, and I haven't used them to build my any buildings that I've built, is that the, the fluid applied systems work really well. Um, if I hear some negatives, you know, I will report them. But um, most people who've tried them like them. They cost a little more, but they're easily repairable and uh, they're very versatile. So um, if you can afford it, or you have a client who can afford them, give them a give them a check out, check them out, and tell us what you think. The only downside I've heard from people who are supervisors or inspectors is they worry a little about a bit about the mill thickness it's hard to verify and they're afraid that some applicators might be putting it on too thin and that might slip by the quality control process and for that reason some of the people specifying these systems say well with at least with a peel and stick or a membrane it was made in a factory and you know how thick it is yeah. but I think if you use a little common sense I think they're pretty f forgiving with slight misapplications they still seem to work i haven't heard of any failures so hey check my blog on that by the way i did a couple videos on uh uh some weather barrier testing that's happening at university of texas in austin Great. and uh and on that thought real quick uh i would highly encourage people to go with the thick mill product compared to the thin mill product i think you get a lot more forgiveness and uh mistake proofing when you use a thick mill product that makes sense to me Hey, Martin, thank you so much for being with me, and uh, I'll look forward to seeing you next year at the 20th uh, Westford Symposium on Building Science. Thank you, Martin. Thanks, Matt. It's been a pleasure.